So I defined here a simple data type of ours, which on what this gobbledygook means, I have created a video that you can check out. Um, but what I want in this video is to create a function that deals with this, uh, with instances of this data type. Basically it takes in instances and gives back some uh, an instance of it. So how can we make a function for this thing? Well, let's first define, well, a problem. Let's first create two instances of these point of this point data type. So say point p1 is going to be equal to, remember you can actually define them like so, you can say point x equals, I don't know, let's say um, 1, point y equals 1. And I'm going to say the same thing for point p2, except this one is going to be equals, let's say, 3 and dot y equals 2. Now these are points on a 2D plane, right? And I, what I want uh, with my function is to get the middle point, right? The, this to create a simple line and we want the middle point of that line. To do this is fairly simple. All we have to do is average each coordinate on its own. Basically have um, p1.x plus p2.x over two. And that would be our um, middle points x coordinate and do the same for y, right? Simple enough, but I want this to be a function. So uh, to start off, we're gonna have to create here a function that, well, at first it's going to return a point, right? Because that's the result of our function. And I want to call it get middle point, let's say. And this guy is going to take in two other points. I'm gonna say point, point P1 right and or just point a so that we don't confuse them with these ones right so point a and point b so now all we have to do is actually calculate the variables inside uh, this middle point so i'm gonna call it i'm gonna call it m and i'll say m dot x equals remember it's the sum so a dot x plus b dot x and all that over Two, right and the same thing for y so just m dot y equals a dot y plus b dot y over 2 all right and now all we have to do is well technically return it right so return m now let's call this function so first things first we're gonna have to define our middle points so I'm gonna say m or just middle and middle is going to be equal to get middle point of p1 and p2 and if i try to also print it all right if i try to run this now you'll notice that we get 2 and 1.5 and that is actually correct because 1, 1 plus 3 over 2 is 4 over 2 which is 2 and then 1 plus 2 over 2 is actually 3 over 2 which is 1.5 so we got the correct answer but how did we actually get the correct answer like Really, what happened here? So in this function, many things actually happened behind the scenes when we were uh, passing in this uh, struct and actually returning it back from the function. Uh, mainly, we actually passed in these two uh, variables by value. What that means? Well, that means that we've actually copied the whole, the whole instance, both x and y, for the function to be passed along, right? So the uh, so the program said, oh, okay, well, if you're calling this with P1 and P2, I'm just gonna copy this and copy this and send it to this function, right? And same thing it did with the middle point. What we have here is M, and when this returned, it actually copied the values of M and returned it into here. But wait, you say, isn't that kind of inefficient? Why do we really have to copy and paste everything. Isn't that quite bad if you have larger structs? Yes, that's actually really bad. If you have much larger structs that take uh, larger amounts of memory, well, then you've got a problem and you should actually optimize this properly. Well, the first optimization that we should do here is to first pass in each point by reference, right? We don't really have to copy both parameters. To do this, all all we have to do is first make them the type of 
that we want, basically a point pointer. And also for safety purposes, we should also make it const so that we don't actually modify the parameters. All right, and to make this compile, actually, we're gonna have to do this, so to take the actual address of each of them. And if I try to run this, you'll notice that we also get an error because we also need to use the error operator here, so. All right, and now if I try to run this, well, we get the same result. Nothing has changed. That's amazing. So, okay, you say, well, we've optimized this part, right? The parameters. Now, instead of passing the whole struct, all we pass at max is just two addresses, which are usually two 64-bit uh, integers, right? Two 64-bit pointers, which is really nice. It's just We're just taking up like 16 bit, uh, bytes from this call. But... Uh, the same thing happens with this point, right? It's getting copied. How can we actually uh, remove that copying uh, part? Well, this is trickier. What we have to do first is, well, we can say point pointer, right? So that we can get a pointer to this struct and then simply return the address like we did before. And now we don't actually get, right? We don't, we cannot really do this anymore since these are not the same type this is a pointer and this is the um, instance of the struct what we have to do is to actually dereference this and then run it right this this works this works in our case but in larger projects don't forget you might even work on some of them um this can get trickier right we have to understand that this m and this pointer are a bit fishy. This instance of the struct is actually allocated on the stack and we're passing a reference for that. But the problem with that is once we get out of this function, the stack gets well deallocated like any other functions stack. So this point kind of goes away. And what we're dealing with here, we're actually dereferencing a unallocated piece of memory that is actually marked to be later on uh, replaced by some other memory and you might actually get a lot of issues with this right you get you will get this memory modified without you actually wanting that to happen so how can we solve this well there are a few solutions the first thing would be to actually instead of doing point m is just to say point pointer m equals m alloc and just say uh, size of point right and also change these since we're now we're not gonna have to dereference them and also we don't need to pass in the address we can simply pass in m since it's already an address if i try to run this you'll notice that we get the same result right so this kind of solved our issue but now it created another one um we now have dynamically allocated memory and we have to deal with that. So to solve this issue, what we'll have to do is actually, instead of taking in the values of this and just dereferencing on the spot, we'll have to get the pointer to it, right? So this becomes a pointer and we might also be able to make this a wine liner, but it becomes a pointer and we also have to use the arrow operator here, right? No longer can we just get the attributes this way. And we can, we also need to free this memory because remember, malloc just simply allocates the memory. It doesn't ever deallocate it for us. We have to do that, right? So what we have to do is say free and middle, right? And now this works properly as it should. The issue with this one is just that Whenever we call this, we must have this line of code accompanied with it, which is hard to remember, right? It's tricky because if we, for example, have this in a separate library by somebody else, if we call this, why do we need to actually free the memory that somebody else allocated uh, dynamically for us? That's a bit strange, right? And some libraries actually do this. It's not really a major issue, but this can be improved. And that's what I'm about to show you. To improve this, 
all we have to do is instead of passing in a return type, we just say void. And at the end here, we say point star out. Simple as that. And that's going to be uh, the place in memory that we're going to modify. And we don't need this anymore. And we're going to simply modify our out pointer here and no longer return anything. So it just kind of modifies this place in memory. And because this is the only one that's not const, we know that this is actually the out, even if we don't know the name of it. Due to all the others being const pointers, that means that they are not modifiable, right? Um, we know that this one is going to be probably modified, right? So now to call this function, well, we need to do it in a different way. We now have to leave it as a um, struct instance on the stack. So we're going to allocate memory for it. And we're going to have to call it on a separate line and say the third parameter is the address of middle. And now once we also change these back and remove the free call, we don't need to free memory that is actually on the stack. You'll notice that now we get a proper result, right? So that's a proper result with no copying, right? We never copy any sort of value here. We all we do is, well, we do copy the actual pointer, the actual uh, address of it, but at most we're going to copy eight bytes per uh, parameter, which is just 24 bytes. That's pretty easy for the computer to do. We don't have to copy the whole instance of the struct. And we also don't need to deallocate memory that is allocated for us somewhere else. All right. So this is, this is a really neat way to actually uh, manipulate struct instances without dealing with copying them. Right. If you have small uh, structs, you, it's okay to actually copy them, but if you want performance, you probably will want to pass in uh, by reference, right? So contrasting this with other languages, in C, basically the default is pass by value, right? We pass everything by value. When, when we return an actual struct, uh, not a pointer, actual struct type, we're actually going to copy the whole, every single value and pass, in, pass it by uh, value. Whereas in uh, garbage collected la uh, languages, like let's say C sharp or Java, the default or well, the only way to do it is to pass by reference, right? By default, if we say in Java, for example, say point out, that's already going to pa be passed by reference. And we're only going to copy eight bytes at most uh, for this single parameter, right? So I hope you got something out of it. You understood uh, what are the performance benefits of doing this instead of just point, just passing in uh, every single parameter by value and the return. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any other questions, leave them down below in the comments and see you guys next time. Bye.